It's tabletop time and I'm Dave and today we are painting a whole bunch of 3D printed models. I'm super excited because tomorrow we are playing our first D&D &D game at the studio. So I've actually got Jeremy, Rob and Jazza all playing a little one shot in D&D &D where they're going to be fighting some nasty little kobolds. It's going to be a lot of fun but that's tomorrow and I don't have the encounter painted. So today I'm going to take advantage of all the awesome 3D printers we have and I'm going to print up not only an entire encounter for a level three party, but also the terrain we're going to fight on. I'm also going to be using this opportunity to talk to everyone out there about how I go about picking my creatures for my D&D encounters and give you all a little bit of a heads up on what my players can expect tomorrow. I'm super stoked because today's video is sponsored by 3D Printed Tabletop who have put out a new Kickstarter, Lost Adventurers, which there are late pledges available now for. And I'm very pumped to be painting the Kobold Coalition models that are coming out very soon. Kobolds are such a staple of D&D that I'm very excited to chuck Jeremy, Rob and Jazza against those poor little reptiles. So just in time, things have arrived. There was an Anycubic Viper, which is a brand new printer that we have at the studio that Jazza got me to set up. While I'm very familiar with resin printers or SLA printers in general, I'm not familiar with extrusion printers, which are the ones that squirt the plastic out, such as the Anycubic Viper. So using it for the first time was fun experience. Rob and I test printed an owl. And while getting distracted watching the squirty machine have a fun time squirting out owl goo, once it was done, it was time to get serious. I put together a print bed of some terrain that the Kobold Coalition would be fighting on and pressed go. With print one underway, we quickly realized that we wanted more models, more terrain, more everything. Jazza had just brought to the new studio his Flash Forge 3D printer. So we took advantage of that and we set up another print to go overnight so that this morning I would have the two prints ready. So we're gonna flash back in time and take a look at that process. They're looking pretty good. I haven't actually looked at them yet. Like I pulled them out, but they were soaked in resin. So, hey, look at those little cuties. He's got his spatchy spatch. He's spatching. Oh, you got to spatch these bad boys. Oh, these, they're so cool. I love these. <laughs> like their armor. They're in, they're in barrels. All right, I want to zoom in. Just gonna make noises to cover the zoom. Ready? Yep. Hey. They're in little barrels. They are. We should name one of them Shad Cobalt. <laughs> I like this one. He's got a crossbow that's shooting a Molotov cocktail. As you do. Anyway, we'll. This is what you call being extremely lucky and having a lot of very cool tech, but also have not fully set up the 3D printing area before we decided to suddenly use one, two, three. Oh, and look, and curing. This is a absolute crazy workflow. Breaking the plastic supports off the bottom of the extrusion prints was a nightmare. It is by far my least favorite part of this process. It was miserable. My fingers hurt, uh, I cut myself, uh, resin stabbed me, plastic stabbed me. I broke the model in like four places and then had to glue it back together. <sighs> okay. I just gotta get used to it. I'm sure there's about a million and one people who know how to do this really, really well out in the comments. So why did I choose the models I chose and in the quantity I chose? Well, we have roughly 10 kobolds and a kobold is a challenge rating one eighth, which means eight of them equals a challenge rating one. Now for a party of three players, I roughly want challenge rating two and a bit, but for it to be nice and easy, challenge rating two is what I'm aiming for. So eight kobolds, 10 kobolds? That doesn't seem like enough. So what I'm going to do is slightly modify the stats of these creatures. And to do that, all I'm going to do is the ones that have the wooden barrels on, I'm going to give them a few more points of armor and make them a little bit harder to hit. But I'm also going to take two of these kobolds. I in particular love these models because they scream kobold inventor. Kobold inventor is a slightly more powerful kobold that has a challenge rating quarter. And they mostly have a bunch of very silly tricks up their sleeve. Silly, like throwing Molotov cocktails at people. Ha ha ha. S silly. So I chose to paint the kobolds in Wraithbone spray painting as I was largely going to be using contrast paints and Wraithbone allows for warmer tones which will look better for organic creatures. For the FDM prints I used a spray putty primer that Jazza suggested would help to get rid of some of the layer lines. And for the resin components I used Corax White, a more neutral tone that I could put contrast on top of. I'll be going back over the sprayed puttied areas with Corax White as well but I need to leave them to dry for a while. So with all that spray done and the kobolds dry, it was time to move on to batch painting these kobolds. Stop! Stop! Stop Dave from the past! We can't go any further unless we've 
talked about our sponsor, which is the new Kickstarter Uncharted Lands. Now, this is brought to you by the same guys that did the Lost Adventurers Kickstarter, and also back in the day, a Kickstarter I backed, the Lost Dragons. Now, we've got all these super sweet models and terrain, but not only that, this Kickstarter includes a book with the lore, the factions, stat blocks for D&D, for creatures and monsters that aren't usually included, and all the wonderful things that add on to their existing world, but also can be used as modules for your campaigns of D&D. Personally, I've printed a bunch of these in the past, especially ones from the Lost Dragons Kickstarter, and I love having fully realized little settings in your game. So often in D&D, you end up going off on a tangent to the ice realm or something like that. And it's rarely just one or two encounters in that area. So being able to use these awesome minis and awesome terrain sets to make realized worlds is something that I super appreciate and I'm sure you'll super appreciate too. So thank you again to our awesome sponsor. Check out the links in the description and go and back that Kickstarter now and get some sweet minis and rules and book and everything. It's gonna be sweet, coming at you soon. Thank you, love it. Love your work, Danny. Love your work, team. I chose to use a mix of two contrast paints for the red. I used Griffhound Orange and Blood Angels Red, putting the Griffhound Orange largely towards the chest, armpits, and under the neck, as well as the underside of the tail. Then, while the orange was still wet, I applied Blood Angels Red, letting those contrasts blend together at the edges and making a seamless transition. Once the contrast red was dry on the skin, I finished it off with a dry brush of Heavy Orange by Vallejo. With the skin painted and dry brushed, it was time to move on to the next elements. I painted the areas that would become metal with black Templar contrast paint and the areas that would be wood with wildwood contrast paint, as well as all the weapon handles and blades. I used contrast skeleton horde to quickly lay down a bone color on the teeth and horns. I used contrast militarum green for a lot of the cloth, as well as contrast snake bite leather for some of the other areas that looked more like leather, bags, straps, things like that. I won't go too much into how I did the basing on these models. It wasn't very complicated. I just mixed astro granite, debris, and sterling mud in very quantities and slap that all over the base. A couple of the kobolds I'm calling kobold inventors. They have flaming bottles of alchemist's fire. Fire is often something that newer players highlight incorrectly, so I wanted to give a quick tip on that. Any light source, the brightest point is actually the deepest point or the inside point, the source of it. So if you look at a flaming torch, it should be brighter, hotter, more yellow or white right at the source of that fire. And then as the flames trail off into smoke, they'll get darker and eventually blacken. I haven't bothered to get that complicated on these, but I did make sure to start with the yellows towards the source of the flame and then move up through oranges to reds towards the tips. When it was dry, I went to my trusty tufts and applied a few different textures of tufts and colors all over the bases. And immediately, they're looking pretty snazzy. All right, I'm feeling super stoked about these kobolds. Look, they were a quick paint job, but they are looking sweet. I especially love how the metallic parts have pulled them together and definitely made it look more than just a contrast paint job. These models ooze character, and this is the kind of stuff that makes me want to run D&D encounters. I've seen a million generic models out there in my times, but when I see really unique, characterful models that tell a story, they just make me want to paint them. And these miniatures really do that for me. He's wearing a barrel, but I'm running out of time and I have to paint the terrain for this set. Thankfully, we have a lot of spray paints on our stand over here, which is gonna save him for more time because I don't even need to pull out an airbrush. Having two different brown sprays in rattle cans allowed me to super quickly lay down these brown tones that I wanted without having to spend all the time setting up, packing up and cleaning an airbrush. With black and two browns established, I didn't need to do any highlighting on the wood. This is terrain. I'd like to paint terrain efficiently and get it done for the encounter, but I also like to add a few little elements that make it look more than rushed. So, from there, it was important to establish some more colors. I grabbed Scrupulous Brown, which I thought matched relatively closely to the contrast snake bite leather that I'd previously used on some of the kobold leathers and straps. I thought putting this element on for the ropes on the bits of terrain would tie them in with the kobolds. Following on from this, it was time to paint the metal. And for here, rather than using the contrast method, as we didn't have the contrast undertones, I just went for straight, good old fashioned lead belcher, painting it on all the metal rings and all the elements I thought would be metal on these models. A couple of the other models also had stone in areas and I'd made sure to paint those stone areas as well using a single coat of a dark gray. Now a couple of areas on these models would be using washes. I grabbed Seraphim Sepia, putting it on all the rope areas and also on the bones, while the metal, well that got a liberal helping of Nuln Oil, our classic old friend. The stones also had a Nuln Oil wash and with that done, 
The terrain was pretty much finished. It was a really simple paint job, but by using especially those Zenithal highlights with the wood tones, you can't even tell. To finalize these paint jobs, I used the same mix of texture paints that I used on the bases of the Cobalt, which was just Sterling Mud and Astro Granite Debris, mixed in different quantities around the base. Now, a lot of D&D games that I've played have incorporated maps or boards and minis. It's very common for me and my gaming groups to use that, but not many of them have incorporated 3D terrain. This was honestly one of my first forays into using 3D terrain, but I'd thought about it quite a lot before I painted it. I have to say, after seeing how easy it has been for me to paint this encounter, put it together, as well as paint the terrain, I'm really tempted to incorporate 3D terrain into my D&D encounters a bit more. It looks great, it elevates everything, and I'm super proud of the effect. After one day, one day, it's amazing what you can achieve with some thought out techniques and an action plan to achieve those results. So I forgot one. I'm almost finished everything and I forgot this. Now he was gonna throw it aside because we're almost out of time. And I said, no, Dave, this is a YouTube channel. We make content and you speed painting this as content. So he has three minutes starting now. Oh no, paintbrush is down! No, I'm still going. We got close. Ah, oh, the time li limit! The self-imposed time limit! No! Oh, no, no I, I couldn't possibly... Uh, my painting license is gonna be revoked. Kadoi! Now you guys are just using this as an excuse to get out of work. Oh, shh. He's on the I just wanna lie. game has been and gone. It is the following week and the encounter has been played out and oh boy, it did not go the way I anticipated. Keep your eyes on the channel. Coming up is going to be the first D&D game played on tabletop time, which was really fun. We had a lot of fun doing it, but um, we were so crunched on the timeline that my models went from the painting table directly onto the gaming table and we played the encounter right then and there, which was super awesome. And I can't wait for you all to see that. I had a great time filming this. I had a great time building these models and it's really inspired me to go and once again, prepare some fully painted D&D encounters, including some terrain for my own D&D group. So you guys, you know who you are. And I know some of you watch these videos. At some point soon, you're going to see some cool terrain on the tables as well as a painted encounter. So look forward to that in my own D&D group. As always, thank you everyone who watches these videos. I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you to our patrons who have made this possible. And you've really given me this place to make these awesome models and do all this cool stuff. So it's super sweet. Um, you know what? I'm going to get nice and squished right here in the middle. So either side, either side, you can just be scrolling down, being great. Love it. Oh, thanks. Oh, look at this one. Or is it this one? Fool me now, editor. <laughs> it's on me, isn't it? The patron scrolls on me. And if it's not on me, I almost look more stupid. Well, you know what they say. You can't force an awkward ending. So, um, bye everyone. Thank you.